pry open, but it is interesting to see uh, which character he would want to go. As uh, we can see it down here, it is going to be the banjo. So you could kind of treat this as almost like Ray trying to beat Dark Falcon at a similar kind of game plan, and who can set up their their tools, set up their set play uh, by conditioning first, or if uh, if Dark Falcon is able to just like overwhelm uh, Ray with his stronger, generally considered stronger projectiles and overwhelming range, good patience on Dark Falcon's part too. Yeah, this game has been starting off pretty even for both players. Oh, just throwing out the Wonder Wing. If one of those Wonder Wings connects at the ledge, that could be huge. You know, with that somewhat more limited recovery, but getting him deep off stage could be the end of a Belmont. And for the most part, they're not really able to get these huge edge guards, uh, the ledge trap started rather. They've been going back and forth, throwing out projectiles, explosions and fire every which way. But so far, no real meaningful hits have happened in the past while. Little nicks and cuts here, but oh, it seems that Ray has finally found the first opening, but he's not willing to go that deep with it. Still just trying to to have the patience to see what the opponent is doing here. Dark Falcon has been trapped at the ledge very consistently, but still getting off it. Wow, what a read from Ray dipping down just enough to get that forward air. Not actually enough to take the stock, but we do see a hefty, hefty percent lead for Utopian Ray at the moment. Yeah, I really want to showcase just how Ray has been going about this, because we've seen it a punchy time before. Cross and its active hitbox will routinely destroy uh, destroy all the eggs destroy grenade like it's nothing it will just sit out there and win so what ray has been doing instead is and thankfully uh, the stage that they picked uh, facilitates this he's been coming in at these more awkward angles these 30 30 or 60 degree angles and dropping right on top of dark falcon where he can't reliably hit with something like a angled up back air or an up air and that grenade egg just comes in like a like an orbital drop and it's really starting to mess with dark falcon on top of these wonder wings like ray has been oh I, oh i mean he's still okay yeah. he should be able to live this although <laughs> now he's lost off stage and this is where oh man look at dark falcon just putting up these holy waters all of these these aerials and projectiles but somehow ray makes it through all of that I'm not sure if he's going to be able to actually get any more meaningful hits in, but as it stands currently, at least, he is surviving. Look at this. And I like going high, just trying to be evasive. Yeah, he's really utilizing Ray's... Uh, not Well, Ray's utilizing his own ability and Banjo's ability just to, like, constantly use that spring jump, get out of, uh, get out of Dark Falcon's immediate range and always face the pressure. Uh, and always escape the pressure. I mean, he's gotten 114 and is still living. Banjo super heavy. Oh, finally, they're actually finding the kill. Nice confirm into that axe. And okay, Wonder Wing actually, the invincibility for it, not able to come out before the holy water stuffs it. And now, oh, perhaps a little bit of a start for Dark Falcon. He is down by quite a bit 119% to Utopian Race 25. And Utopian Ray still able to, seems like, consistently find these little hits to put him off stage. Jabbing him. I really like that, actually. Now doesn't look for, like, a kill off of the, uh, off of the down throw, but instead just getting consistent damage here. 161% back throw might actually be able to do it. It, in fact, does. And now Utopian Ray almost a clean, clean stock up here as he finally laps him in percent. If you are Dark Falcon, you are shaking in your boots. Not only because, you know... All right. Because he's dead. The jump, was, the jump was taken. The jump was... Uh, so, in that final stretch, as we can get the replay here, Ray completely flipped the script. This Wonder Wing, aggressive. Fighting through everything. He gets counter hit, but whatever. He can still put on the pressure just because of how much quicker Banjo's item spawns are. The grenade to forward air, just a raw true combo. But he keeps going forward and the egg sniping the jump only facilitates that even further like yeah he well he sniped the jump early on the double jump happened pretty pretty early yeah, and you totally may just recognize that air, he, he freshes his uh, he freshes his tools there 
Uh, and then he double oh, jumped. Oh, the double here. jump was there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you are so, correct, yeah, but, but he like, oh, you're right. You're noticing, you yeah, noticing the jump there, and still trying to confirm the kill. Just poked, poked out of range of the whip. Did he? Did he up air? Was he maybe trying to forward air there? To grab the ledge? Uh, no, he was uh, angled up. It was angled up forward air. Uh, that, uh, that seemed like the intent, but it was after the. It was after the egg already hit him, so he was out of range. Either way, Lila is the stage pick, which normally is seen as a bad stage for, uh, for, um, geez, for Belmonts because of their, <laughs> <laughs> because of their, the specific angles on their items, which, you know, we kind of saw at the start. But Ray, uh, but Dar usually you can uh, overcome that because of the awkward angles from jumps. Uh, sending holy water at specific reaches, but you put Utopian Ray just doesn't seem to care at this point. Like he, he is fully invested in making Dark Falcon feel as uncomfortable as possible in any spot. Yeah, just running right through there, just getting that grab, and here we once more have Utopian Ray in control in the corner. A nice aggressive option to get out of that disadvantage, but Dark Falcon, he's been lapped in percent a while ago, and oh, with that, the down smash almost doing it, and yeah, look at this Utopian Ray going deep off stage, really trying to just put the, he's, he's seen how he can get rewarded for, you know, following through, and he is not, he seems to be relishing the opportunity to do so. Finally taking that stock, a mistech on that platform, going to be the end of Dark Falcon's second stock. And Utopian Ray sitting with three still. He feels absolutely invincible at the moment. I'm not sure if this is the stage or whatever, but at the moment, Utopian Ray is just... Even in, he was doing it well in game one, but this is an entirely different breed. He's out of Wonder Wings. He doesn't even care. He's still catching these rolls, putting the pressure on in the corner. All right, that time, though, does not fall for it. Doesn't get forward smashed, but, I mean, if not getting forward smashed, I feel like that's a consolation prize, especially when you're still dead at the bottom of the stage like that. A three stock, a clean three stock from Utopian Rain game two. I feel like that entire that game too and there there is still time for dark falcon to recover from this situation as a, a a stage like this just didn't seem to be at its advantage especially given uh banjo's means of finding two frames and hitting below the ledge are yeah. super strong also but it's just like i feel like forwarders yeah. weren't grabbing the ledge like if we could repeat go back to that first clip the first stock uh the first stock here, didn't he? It seemed like he went off stage and forward aired. Not he, grabs. he gets off, he gets hit off again with the late forward air. Oh, with, with the late, um, he's and out then, of range. Oh, he was just out of range, yeah. He, he might have not been out of range for the angled up version, but he didn't angle it up, so mm. that's just free real estate for for Ray. It's, I mean, he, yeah, it goes straight forward there. Oh, okay. Devin, our uh, right. our eye in the sky is actually always... informing us that it was the 55 frame rule that because he uh, had just gotten hit, he could not re-grab the ledge. All right, we're going to be seeing the same oh, characters moving into game three. I don't think... Yeah, we're not seeing Lylat again. Lylat was an interesting uh, take, but probably a mistake. Um, and now we're moving into game three. This is best three out of five in top eight, but... Uh, some major adjustments need to happen from Dark Falcon right now because that last game spoke volumes. Utopian Ray not quite starting off as strong this time around. It seems like just with the use of these platforms, we're seeing all sorts of down-angled aerials, holy waters, jumping around, just weaving in and out. And Utopian Ray is actually the one who seems to be completely on the back foot at the moment. Oh, but turning around and hitting all of those little eggs, that's actually some solid damage. The damage continuing. Utopian Ray catching these landings, putting him way up there. Okay, finally managing to get back down to the ground, but puts himself right back up to the platforms. I will say it does seem like Dark Falcon is relatively comfortable there. Even if he is down in percent at the moment, the way he had been performing early on was definitely, definitely, if he can recreate that, it could be a path to victory, at least for this game three. 
Oh. And what these platforms really do for him is it, it's miles different from how the lilac platforms felt like they hurt him more than they helped him. These battlefield platforms let him retreat. They let him uh, hide from these angles that Ray had constantly been like a thorn in his side at. And the general uh, pace of neutral has been it's so much more in his favor because he's, the center stage has been that much smaller. The high recovery was ooh, okay, risky and didn't work out for him. <laughs> Yeah, and now we have Utopian Ray with the stock lead, meaning that he can now start to play the way he wants. A cool jab reset for some 17 damage and reading that get up option. We've seen just that Utopian Ray, it feels like he throws out these quick, quick air, quick, quick moves at the ledge. And then just when you least suspect it, the heavy hitting forward smash comes out. But at the moment, Dark Falcon struggling to land. Just back air after back air, aerial after aerial, going deep once more, and that's another stock just gone. The first one lasted for a long, long time for Dark Falcon, second one not at all. And I think it kind of shows the duality that in this matchup, yes, you can survive till late for senses. Elmont, he's pretty dang heavy, but also you can get Elge guarded and you're just, you die at any percent at the moment now. Okay, up B, still not enough with very high base knockback, but low knockback growth. Takes a while for that move to kill. And now we're seeing it finally. F tilt after Utopian Ray cornered himself. Will do it, but 76% on his last stock and Utopian Ray looking oh, oh, so comfortable at only 2% here. I think that we'll, we'll see there's so much change that needs to happen. So many things need to go right for Dark Falcon. Oh, shielding, shielding that forward smash and getting, instead of getting hit by it, could be a start. But at the moment here, 111 and still has not figured out an answer. God, so, there were so many instances of Ray uh, noticing exactly when Dark Falcon would use his jump, of what she would use it early. Uh, in a lot more spots than he probably should have given the Belmont uh, player, of course, given that he's a Belmont player, of course, hindsight being 2020. But yeah, clipped right here, and he doesn't have his jump. The the Wonder Wing kind of superfluous because he didn't recover anyway, and just whenever whatever happened in that early stock where Dark Falcon seemed like he had a grasp on like how Ray was going about. Uh, really punishing his neutral really punishing his item play it disappeared stock two because this this second stock went by uh, so quick the landings were getting caught uh, by just hiding underneath platforms the jumps uh, uh the aggressive jumps to put angle down aerial were getting caught and the egg to seal the deal The, the perfect counterplay to a character that really does not have many ways to recover. And just by putting these little hazards that Dark Falcon had to deal with constantly, like Egg doesn't deal much in damage, but what it lacks in damage, it makes up for in coverage. Just that's a nice arc throughout the air that Belmont players really don't want to deal with. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's and I think that we, we're going to be seeing Utopian Ray later on. 